Hi, everybody! JRPGs, they can be emotional roller coasters, they can be action packed adventures, but they can also be a relaxing affair, especially if they're turn based. They're also some of my all time favorite games. Ever since I was introduced to them properly in my 20s, I've always found that if I'm stressed out, these are the games I gravitate towards, mainly because I find it easy to get lost in their worlds and their stories. Then if they're turn-based, I'm able to just let my mind wander and I'm able to unwind, which is something I need to do more of. So since I'm in need of some relaxation and my one year anniversary on YouTube was coming up, I thought it'd be a fun idea to ask a bunch of my content creator friends to come together and share some of the JRPGs they find the most relaxing. You'll hear my pick right at the very end, so stick around for that. So let's start with the Mad Belmont selection and then move into some of the other creators picks. What's going on everyone, it's the Mad Belmont here and I'm not talking about Castlevania for once. Let me just say thank you to Colin for letting me not only participate in this collab in front of the camera, but also behind it because I am the editor of this joint. So when I think of relaxing JRPGs, okay, when I think of relaxing JRPGs, there are a lot that come to mind, but the one that always comes to my mind first before anything else, it's a little game by the name of Chrono Trigger, baby. That's right, Chrono Trigger. Now, this game, I remember playing it for the first time in uh, 2000. Yeah, 2000. I was on a JRPG kick because I had just gotten into the genre the year before in 1999. And I was playing basically every JRPG I possibly could get my hands on. Every JRPG under the sun, I wanted a piece of the pie. And I had... At the time, two different consoles, no, three different consoles to play around with. I had the NES, the Super Nintendo, and the N64 at the time. And I was about to get a PlayStation 2 later that year. So, with having these different systems at my disposal, what I decided to do was play as many RPGs as I possibly could on these systems and... I stumble across Chrono Trigger, and from the moment go, you're in that opening town, you have that cool town theme playing, it's a party, it's a festival type of environment, and you just get sucked into that world. You want to get to know Chrono, and Marl, and Toad, and all of the other characters that you encounter across that journey, and... There are so many cool and interesting locales that you go and visit in this game because of the whole time travel element that was added to it. So you're in prehistoric times and, uh, you know, one moment and then you're at a very distant future the next and you just don't know what is going to happen, of course, until you finish the game. But when you first play that game, you have no idea what's going on. So... That sense of discovery that this game gives you is just almost unparalleled by 99% of this genre. And I cannot think of a more fitting game for a list like this than Chrono Trigger. Because it's just, it's the game that puts me in the most comfort I know that uh, a lot of you probably, if you know me, expect to see Final Fantasy VI here, but that game takes me on too much of an emotional roller coaster for it to be considered a relaxing game for me. So Chrono Trigger definitely fits the bill here. Hello, Chicken Phillips here, and thank you to Colin Lack for having me on this wonderful collaboration about relaxing GRPGs. Now, my choice for a relaxing GRPG is a bit different from what you might expect. Now this GRPG is none other than Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, hold on, how is a game about war relaxing? Well, don't worry, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> now why is this game relaxing to me? Well, it's down to the gameplay loop when it comes to the likes of the combat and when it comes to the monastery. Now you might be thinking, what are you on about the monastery? I've never played this game. Well, basically your game is split into two parts. You 
are the professor and you have a class, well, a house that you look after. See, it's in the name, three houses. <laughs> and you are teaching your students underneath you. Now, in the monastery, you're able to have freedom and basically make your choices to help your house. So whether that is taking part in training battles, whether that is having meals with your characters to boost up their stats, whether that's just doing a bit of fishing or a bit of gardening, it is up to you. Having that choice and freedom, I really like this. Instead of being pushed down a narrow path, basically told you need to do this. <laughs> now when it comes to the battle side of things, now I really love the Fire Emblem combat. And it's really a combat system that I've never been fatigued by. Because you do get fatigue when you do play certain games from time to time. I know this with being a Final Fantasy fan. Sometimes you need to change it up because you want something different from a turn-based battle system. But I have never felt this with Fire Emblem. I always want to delve back into it. Now the story in general as well, as I said, yeah, it's about war, but it's seeing these stories through different perspectives. It makes me want to replay the game. And it's a game that I've played multiple times over. So it is a game that I will always come back to when I don't know what to play. I I'm in a funk. I will go back to this game because, well, it relaxes me. But what I want to know now is what GRPG is relaxing to you? Let myself and Colin know down in the comments down below. And also a congratulations is in order for Colin for reaching one year on YouTube. And let that reign even longer. This has been Chicken Fillet and until next time, Tate bye! The world ends with you is my favorite action role-playing game with a urban fantasy elements developed by Square Enix. What does it make it special? Well, for me, first of all, is the music. The gameplay is great too, and you can play it with your stylus on the Nintendo DS and is a really easy to understand, easy to play. But the music is what it makes the most amazing gameplay experience ever because you can feel the atmosphere, you can feel the tension sometimes. The character plots are great. There are amazing plot twists and I don't really want to do any spoilers but you need to at least listen to the soundtrack which has rock, hip-hop and electronica and it's very various and then try to play it you won't regret this it's amazing hello lovely people i'm luca from fato gaming and thanks for having me colin i'm really excited to tell you more about my favorite relaxing jrpg but to be honest this wasn't that easy because jrpgs usually can get quite intense with their combat and story but then i remembered one game that was as relaxing as it can get and quite frankly not enough people talk about this game and this is Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. If you don't know this spin-off, you're probably thinking, wait a second, how can a Monster Hunter game be relaxing? Isn't this full of difficult boss fights? Yeah, well, not this one. This one's different. Monster Hunter Stories 2 is a turn-based JRPG instead of a brutal action-focused game. In Monster Hunter Stories 2, the story revolves around a mysterious monster egg that you have to take care of. The thing is that people around you expect the monster hatching from that egg to be extremely dangerous. But of course, you know better. So it's up to you to figure out what the hell is going on with that thing. In between the story bits, the actual relaxing part starts to make you fall in love with this game. As you explore the many different areas, you can find these monster dens. These are randomly generated and always include a monster egg. Collecting these eggs, forming a party with your creature friends and then leveling them up feels a lot like Pokemon in the best possible way. There are deep systems to customize your combat party and diving into them already is really relaxing, as this game is the perfect mix of building the strongest monsters and fighting cool enemies. But I think the most relaxing part of it all is to grind for the rare monsters in the monster dens. It's just so... desaturated. Also, seeing the baby monsters hatching from their eggs is just so cute. 
if that doesn't bring you inner peace, then you're probably dead inside and should get some professional help. No, but honestly, Monster Hunter Stories 2 is a gem. Getting into its systems not only is super fun, but also a welcoming change of pace compared to many other JRPGs. If you're a fan of monster collecting, turn-based combat and the Monster Hunter franchise in general, I highly recommend playing this. It's so good. Thanks again Colin for having me and for the opportunity to be part of this collaboration. This was a blast. Alright guys, have a great day and until next time. Here, one go away. Status. So uh, Dart, which is the main character, has a immunity to fire damage, which means certain bosses only deal fire damage. Perfect combination. Um, as for the story itself, it starts off with Dart wanting to go save his baby sister that got captured and transferred to a place called Challenge. Now, in itself, it's okay. Like, uh, way to the secret final boss it's hard uh, a lot of people have gotten extremely mad at that boss it is a little stressful for that one because he can de-level you but uh other than that i mean the game is just Hey guys, Up and Nimbus here. So Colin Like has actually invited me to be part of this awesome collab. Most relaxing JRPG that we've played. I have chosen Miitopia for the Nintendo 3DS slash Nintendo Switch. The first time I ever played Miitopia was on the Nintendo Switch. I do think it is the superior version. I remember laying rugged up, playing Miitopia, having some snacks to the side, it was such an awesome, relaxing, and cozy experience. Now, there were a few different games I had in mind for most relaxing JRPG, but I did go with Miitopia because it's very, very casual. It's very easy to get into. There are some challenging aspects later in the game, but for the most part, and the main story of Miitopia, it is quite cozy. So basically the premise of Miitopia is that you play as the Miis in a role-playing game setting. So as you can probably tell, a lot of the characters you would come across in this RPG are your own Mi characters, or you can generate original Mi designs within the game itself. And the game starts off pretty basic. There's a very generic town, there's a mayor, there's some citizens, and then it doesn't take long for the big bad Dark Lord to come onto the scene and start ripping faces off the Mi characters characters. It's actually quite funny when you think about it. There's a lot of wackiness and there's a lot of unexpected twists and turns in a very comedic way. I found myself laughing so much while playing through this game. There is a story plot twist that does happen later on. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil what that is in case you are interested in checking it out for yourself. But overall, Miitopia is such a cozy 
and relaxing experience and you have the social interactions with your me characters being able to feed them stuff and play some mini games and earn armor and weapons and prizes and rewards it still has that social sim aspect that tomodachi life had but it's been somewhat expanded on with the RPG and adventure format. Now, I've only actually played through Miitopia the once before. However, this is a game I will 100% come back to at some point in the future when I need to de-stress and calm my mind. So if I want to enter a zen-like state, Miitopia is the game I will be coming back to. Thanks again to Colin Lack for having me on this awesome collaboration. I hope this video does absolute gangbusters for you, my guy, and I'm looking forward to what other game choices people in this collaboration have chosen. Until the next time, Up and Nimbus is signing off. Hey everyone, what up? Matt Kaiser here, and thank you Colin Lack for inviting me here to be a part of this collab. It was an absolute honor. Now, I was given a choice of a relaxing JRPG that I played, and well, I played quite a few. Things like the Trials of Mana remake, as well as the world of Final Fantasy. But if I had to pick one alongside maybe say Kingdom Hearts 1 as an honorable mention, my choice for relaxing JRPG that I played would have to be the Atelier Marie remake, The Alchemist of Salzburg. Now this is a remake of the 997 game, which was of course the very first game in Gus's long running Atelier series. And this pretty much be quite a different JRPG against the whole contemporary norm that other JRPGs have. Instead of, you know, going out for a big adventure, saving the world, killing God, or making love to, you know, one of your JPEGs. <laughs> In this one, it's more of a carefree and cozy experience where you play as a teacher Marie who's, you know, trying her best to be a successful alchemist and has given her own atelier and where throughout the five years she's been given she has to create something truly impressive so she can not only pass her exams but also you know make herself you know a famous alchemist given the fact that well she's an absolutely terrible student and yeah that's your basic story your story is absolutely very right and it's more a sense of the characters that are driven by the story as you want to see Marie succeed and the party dynamic you do meet through optional because in this game you are able to recruit members whether you hire or fire them and the more you interact with them the more you get to learn about them not only that but the visuals are absolutely nice very cute especially with the chibi art style that really is respectful to the original you know 1997 game but absolutely looks charming as well as having a full on 2D portrait of the characters which absolutely looks you know amazing the combat may be simplified to a T but it's absolutely enjoyable but the really good vibes this game has comes from the music and the success of crafting you know certain items as the more you succeed the more chance Atelier's Marie, well Atelier Marie herself gets her knowledge and reputation boosted and seeing the positivity result after a successful crafting is absolutely amazing. Not only that, but for a game to have not only multiple enemies, but also be around 5 or even 10 hours long, really makes it a nice breeze and anyone who's fatigued or, you know, had played too many JRPGs that go on 50 to 100 hours long. そんな彼女に卒業試験として一見方法が与えられました。まだ時には珍しいものが見つかることも。
So one of my most relaxing game uh, ever is definitely Kingdom Hearts, uh, the first game. And the reason for that is because this game know how to pull you into the feeling uh, of you in different words, even if it's uh, in fights, even if you're just uh, strolling around in the world. And it's just fun to enjoy and just take in to, to just, just go around and enjoy every moment of it and it, it, it doesn't matter how much the game getting harder as you progress in it you after you finish uh, some specific word you just feel absolute enjoyment and the more you proceed in the game uh, the more fun you have and and it's just it's just feeling that the just getting better and relaxing either when you continue and either just you uh, getting all the stuff and it doesn't feel like you uh, doing a chore or anything like that so I think it's definitely a very relaxing game that's really helped you to enjoy uh, JRPG and just feel the game and it just let you be in, a, in some kind of a vibe that makes you just enjoy everything that you do in this game no matter how tough and how uh, small the stuff you do and one of my favorite area in the game is absolutely have to be uh, Travis Town definitely one of the most uh, uh, great uh, areas in the game and also have one of the best song um, either if you hear the song you either just going to scroll around and just continue going in circle just to hear the song or either you're just going to hum the music every time you hear this because it's just that catchy when it comes to comforting jrpgs the one thing that comes in mind for me is the pokemon series it doesn't even really matter which one of the games you want to play as long as it's the core series games as well some of the side games aren't that relaxing but you can just go and play without worrying to having to come up with a big strategy or anything. The games are very simple and you always can go through it with a different team, which is nice and gives it a bit of an edge that other games do not have. Sure, in other JRPGs you might have eight characters and can only put four on your team so you can mix up your team a bit, but not to the amount of Pokemon. And, well, with that comes the aforementioned easiness of the game. You never have to worry about getting through it. You will get through it as long as you don't put yourself in some kind of weird challenge, which is also a good part about them that you can do that. But when you just want to relax and get through a game just casually, yeah, I think Pokemon has you covered there. It's really easy to get in as well. You don't even need to read the story necessarily. Though it might be hard to find out where to go next if you don't. But if you know your way around the games, you don't have to worry about that. Just too bad there's no skip button for the cutscenes and everything. If I had to point out a specific one to play, I would want to go with the newest ones actually. Scarlet Violet and their open worldiness. I say open worldiness because uh, thanks to leveling not scaling, that's not that open, that world. But you still have some choices of where to go, so you can mix up things, get a bit of a new path through the game, while still retaining just the joy of clicking an attack and it just working. Except if you use like a ground type move on a flying type, then that won't work. But there's not too much to keep in mind. And especially also with the newer games, I think it started in X and Y, not completely sure about that, that they tell you the weakness of the enemy Pokemon, at least, well, so you encountered it once. That helps in the part of it being easy, right? So, yeah, there's that. I guess if you want to have a really relaxing experience without worrying too much about anything like item management, equipment management or a good team combination, though there are certainly bad team combinations in Pokemon, but you kind of have to go out of your way to make a really, really bad team that gives you a hard time. And you also can always overlevel after all, which Scarlet Violet helps a lot with not only the XP share, which is a bit of a two-edged sword because, yeah, personally, I also want to 
turn that off for the most part, but it also cuts off the grind with all Pokemon leveling at the same time, and that you just can attack wild Pokemon without getting into the battles, yeah, makes grinding a lot easier, so I would go for that. And that was my take on relaxing JRPGs. Hope you enjoyed. Okay, I know this gave me a bit different than the rest here, but hear me out. Hey yo, it's Kitty here, and my pick on this list is going to be Eeb. Now I know Eeb may seem like it's out of left field, however, this game is a relaxing and comfortable experience for me on so many levels. Just in case you don't know what Eeb is about, Eeb is a JRPG horror game about a little girl named Eeb who has to brave herself through a haunted art gallery. Meeting a couple of other friends along the way, she makes it to the end of the story. Eeb has a very compelling story and character building that is great for such a short game. It's a relaxing and comf comforting for me because I love the story and its characters. So much so, I played this game over 10 times in the last 10 years. And I will do it again. So there is a comfort level because of the replayability and also because I know what to expect as I've played it a few times before. One of the characters in the game also is a comfort for me, Gary. I relate to him on so many levels and me playing the game is just another excuse to hang out with him again. Even if I know what he says and does, he is an inspiration for me to keep going on even when the roads get tough and scary. The last reason I would pick this to be a relaxing comfort piece for me is because it is a contained experience. I know there are horror elements, jump scares, and creepy vibes sprinkled throughout the game. However, it is an experience I can separate from reality. I know this isn't going to actually happen to me, so the scares I feel in the moment are short-lived because the story is so out there that I know it can never happen in real life. Therefore, I don't actually fear for my life when I play this game. So I will continue to play this game for comfort and relaxation. I hope you will check out the game as well. I promise if you love JRPGs and horror like I do, it is a game you should play and ha definitely have in your collection. This is your fanboy Kita, over and out. One of the most relaxing JRPGs I've played this far is Atelier Ryza, Ever Darkness, and The Secret Hideout. From the moment you boot up the game, you're taken away to an island with gorgeous landscapes where the weather is always ideal. Take your time exploring the countryside, farm, beaches, and the town area. As you venture through the quaint town, you're met by some friendly and some not so friendly folks to start off with your story. You and your party set forth on a journey about friendship, self-discovery, independence, and honing your specialized skills. For Ryza, that skill is alchemy. You'll spend a lot of time strolling through various beautiful regions, collecting flowers, herbs, harvesting fruits, fishing, and hunting lesser monsters for alchemy materials. The crafting in this game is extensive. Spending a lot of time in front of the cauldron to see what you can craft has a satisfaction of its own knowing that you're strengthening your party members and helping out the town's villagers. Not to mention the music is delightfully relaxing. It is definitely a cozy one. Thank you Colin for inviting me to this amazing topic that is relaxing JRPG. If you know me on my Twitch channel as the Ace, you are fully aware that I stream a variety of games, mainly JRPGs. And funny enough, the majority of JRPGs I stream are ones made and polished by Square Enix. As I am a huge Kinemars fan, I thought of choosing one of the games for this topic. Then I realized neither of them could really fit the description and what I thought of next was perfect for this topic. So the major key points that I want to focus on when it comes to relaxing JRPGs is the main story, combat system, and probably most importantly, the gentle, beautiful, and amazing soundtrack, which is what led to choosing my favorite game out of the Mana series, Trials of Mana. Oh my God. If you are in my streams, you know how much I love this game. My discovery of this incredible JRPG was when my my partner introduced to me his favorite mana game, Secret of Mana, the predecessor of Trials of Mana. He eventually showed me the emulated fan-made version of Trials of Mana as at the time, Trials of Mana wasn't released in any other country outside Japan. That is until 2019 when they released Collection of Mana on Nintendo Switch which featured the first three mana games, Final Fantasy Adventure, Secret of Mana, and Trials of Mana. To be honest, I wasn't a fan of the emulated version and <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why. So when my loving partner got me Collection of Mana 
and I started playing Trials of Mana, man, I was hooked. I fell in love with this game. This game has multiple playthroughs with three different storylines with two out of the six characters sharing the same storyline. Unlike Secret of Mana, the Trials of Mana combat system in my opinion is so much more fun. While Secret of Mana relies on waiting for the character's bar to reach 100% before attacking and even longer when charging the attack, Trials of Mana's combat system is simply instant attacks with A and special attacks with B. Which get more awesome with each class change. After four successful hits, a special attack can be performed which will cause bigger damage. In later character classes, there will be an additional specials available after six or eight regular attacks. What's even more amazing is that you can set the characters your choice of special attacks when you aren't in control of that character. It's epic, entertaining to watch, and just beautiful with each class. So as you can see, the combat is relaxing in a way that it's simply straightforward. Each character has their own unique fighting style, so when it comes to choosing your party, I highly recommend you choose the two characters that have the same storyline and the third character someone who has a fun fighting style or is a healer. If you are interested in this amazing game, would like to know more info on characters that share the same story and choosing the ideal third character, feel free to leave a comment. The story, or should I say stories, are incredible. So much emotions, heartfelt moments, and even funny moments. Sure, a lot of intense events are happening. However, the story really reels you in, which makes, makes you fall in love with the characters and their personalities. But what really makes the story incredible and pulls you into the story is the music. Oh my God, just listen to this. The nostalgia, the feels, the emotions, the thrill and epicness of the adventure. These tracks are just examples of how incredible the music is. And there's so many awesome tracks. It gives me goosebumps every time whilst playing this game and whenever I listen to this soundtrack in general. Everything about this game is what makes this game relaxing and don't get me started with the fact that the remake made it even more epic with extra story content, extra feels and remastered versions of the amazing soundtracks that is Trials of Mana. I could go on so much longer about Trials of Mana, but in a non-self-promoting way, I'm currently streaming this amazing game and I feel six minutes is underestimating my true passion and love for this beautiful game. Hey everyone, my name is Shinky and I'm an up-and-coming JRPG YouTuber. Big thanks to Colin for inviting me onto your channel. The most relaxing JRPG to me isn't exactly a JRPG. Sorry Colin, 10 seconds and already breaking your rules. The most relaxing game to me would have to be Star Tropics. Star Tropics is an NES game released in 1990. The whole concept of this game is what makes it so relaxing to me. The premise of a game is you're on a vacation to Sea Island to visit your uncle. The reason I find this game so relaxing is it encompasses the whole feeling of a summer vacation. Traveling between islands, hunting out adventures, it reminds me of when I was growing up going on camping trips with my family in unknown areas to me with the mind of a child. I'm sure we all remember exploring forests, trails, and creeks when we were out in nature. It's a feeling that can't be matched, and this game definitely reminds me of that type of feeling. Some other games that came to mind were Harvestella because of the general relaxation of farming, and Atelier Ryza because it also gives the whole summer vacation feel. But I personally feel that Star Trek is the pinnacle for relaxation for me. Thanks again, Colin, for having me, and I hope to see you all on my channel. Peace out. Lunar. Lunar, most known for Silver Star Story Complete, is a classic JRPG that always takes me immediately back to my childhood and hits me right square in the nostalgia. I find it as my own personal little comfort JRPG that I had to address at the forefront of my list. I originally played the game for the PS1, but you can find copies of it for the Sega Saturn, Sega CD, PS1, PSP, Game Boy Advance, and there's even a DS edition of the sequel. Though it's not the preferred edition to play by most fans of the game due to some unsavory changes in overall gameplay mechanics. What really makes it stand out to me as a comfort game is the fact that there's an incredible, relaxing, and nostalgic soundtrack which really never seems to get old, as was the case for many older JRPGs. Along with that, the game features now retro graphics that both have a lot of details and a lot of color, making it a standout game for anyone interested in anime or retro gaming even in the modern age. Speaking of anime, 
The game features a lot of really cool animated cutscenes that look exactly like something you'd see in a TV series of that era. The characters are also a lot of fun, and the game really does a great job of setting up the main quest and introduces unique and memorable characters with great designs most won't forget. I'll admit, a lot of my relaxing feels comes from the nostalgia of this game taking me back to being a child of that era and my excitement for JRPGs is something really new, but I still think it's something anyone could give a go to in 2023 and find a nice relaxing time with. Rhapsody, a music adventure. Rhapsody is another classic comfort JRPG for me, and honestly, as far as comfort title goes, especially if we're talking retro comfort, this one really reigns supreme for the fact that this is perhaps the easiest JRPG I have ever played in my life by a mile. The game centers around the main female protagonist named Cornette, a trumpet playing little girl who just so also happens to have the ability to speak with puppets. The story is basically known as Baby's First Tactic JRPG, or a great first JRPG for a female, but as a 25 year old male, I find a lot of fun in this game. It's essentially just about a little girl finding her Prince Charming, and you know, based off the title, it's obviously also filled to the brim with little Broadway musical style numbers, but the game has a charm to it that can draw anyone into it. There's a lot of great characters, you get a real easy going world sized adventure, and there's even some extra content to explore in the game to find new items, partake in mini adventures, and tons of dialogue that really makes the world feel fully built and realized. I also I like the variety of enemies and the fact that you can capture monsters to keep as puppets and use them in battle. It's a super chill time to grind out areas in order to build up your roster and level your current puppets to gain access to additional spells. I originally played this game for the PS1, however the game has also been released for the Nintendo DS and more recently for the Nintendo Switch and PC. Unknown to me until recently, the game also has two other sequels in its lineup both of which will be released for the first time ever in English for the Nintendo Switch and PC soon. Picking the most relaxing JRPG? Oh, that's a tough one, because there's quite a few things that go into making that decision. Whether it be, you know, the world, just like the world it is, moving around in it, its music, the way it looks, or even how it plays. But if I had to pick something that I find relaxing, it wouldn't just be, like, one game. It'd be a series, and that would be the Ease series. I find Ease relaxing whether when you're not in combat and just wandering around in its world. And combat can be intense, but only when you make it intense. Otherwise, I feel it's got a great flow to it. When, when you're fighting enemies and just moving around in its world, there's just something relaxing about it. And it just makes you want to get lost in that environment. And it also helps that it's music when it comes to the moments of, say, action or even exploration fits so well with its tone. And it's very appealing in terms of its presentation. It's Falcom, I don't know what kind of magic they have when it comes to this stuff. But there's just something about the Ease games that make it fun, and it doesn't feel like a chore. It feels relaxing in terms of everything about it. So when we want to talk about my most relaxing, I mean, just sit at home and chill to the point where Wendy's is going to sue you for stealing their chili recipe. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's five parts golden sun, one part me, and a big part a bunch of AA batteries to fit into my Game Boy Advance because I could not get enough of this game. It was comfort food. It probably is a big factor on why I gained so much weight in my younger years was the golden sun ingestion of yesteryear. I love this game so much from right off the beginning. The story, setting it up, how there was this ancient power and you're founded at the bottom of this hill, this mountain where something inside needs to not be disturbed, but it is and it's awakened by someone trying to steal its power. All of a sudden, you have to rise up and defend it with you and your friends and get your psi energy rampant to the point where you can be heroes of the world. You gotta get these gin where elements are going around in a circle like Pokemon and you traverse these beautiful biomes and the music is ever so delicious. There's bops and there's jams and there's just big inspirational emotional moments there's really annoying caves that are so just cathartic and sometimes it leaves you lethargic sometimes it leaves you diuretic because it's the worst and most annoying but it still remains relaxing to the max i can relax to the max in this game like no other jrpg i think that when i first played this game 
there was a feeling coming over me that, oh my gosh, you can do the Pokemon style version of RPG in Little Ode Me, and it can still work in so many different facets. There can be so many character designs that you fall in love with without needing a character creator, that you can actually read dialogue in a game like this and enjoy it, that there can be weather systems that don't look terrible or sound like gobbledygook. I just, the art style was beautiful. The, the music direction in every new place you went was so well coordinated with what was happening on the screen and how the characters were interacting with each other. I could not get enough of this game from top to bottom. I thought I could look this thing from top to bottom and almost get in trouble because I gave it the googly eyes. I was like a Muppet with this thing. It was good. I really loved it. Did I love the second one as much? Sure, I did. It was a good time. It wasn't as relaxing as the first one. It was good, it was epic, it was fun, it was powerful. But the first one hit me with that magic. I, I know you know how that goes. When you first play a new series, if it's something that really hits you all the way to your heartstrings and does a freaking guitar solo on it, you can't get enough of it. For me, that was Golden Sun. It really awakened me to a new style of JRPG play, and it actually led me into the Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest universes. That's how amazing and 100% impactful this game was on me. And yes, it is relaxing, at least for the majority of it. I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, and you go to Lunaria or whatever the frick, and you got to go through all the different mountains, and the cave is really terrible. It is terrible. It's awful. You can relax and be in pain. In fact, most people, when they're in the hospital, are in pain, and that's when they're most relaxed. Doctors give you relaxers, and this is... Hey, Doc, here, I found it. My prescription is right here. Script it to me. Because I'll read the script. I will, in any voice you want. And there they go, having a great time again with Keep the Crazy. Tune in next time to see what game is not the most relaxing, but the most taxing. Good night, and good frickin' luck. You know what JRPG I find relaxing? Final Fantasy VII. Now, I know some of you are rolling your eyes and want to stop the video right here and there and say, Oh my god, another Final Fantasy VII fanboy. Ugh. Also like Final Fantasy 4, 6, Technics War of the Lions, 9, as well as 10. Does that make me cool now? You gotta cancel me? Alright, good, let me talk to you. Final Fantasy 7, just like most of us in the West, was the first JRPG I ever played. This hit different, because there's not a lot of games that my brothers and I enjoy. I am the youngest of three, and my brothers are seven years older. And we spent many, and I mean many nights, trying to figure out how to play this game, finding lot of materia, finding the best weapons, armor, accessories, everything, and even unlocking all the limit breaks. We were obsessed with this game, and still are to this very day. Something about finally leaving the bustling, smoggy city of Midgar and going out into the overworld for the very first time. Listen to that overworld music. It's great. From going to the very peaceful Chocobo farm to the very cold ice cold inn. There's just something about the music that just sets the tone for each and every beat of the game. And I haven't even talked about the gameplay yet. And I believe the Materia system of Final Fantasy VII may be the best in the franchise. Why? Because it's absolutely busted. Can't tell you how many hours I've spent finding materia, grinding materia, and combining it with other materia to make myself damn near unstoppable. There's something satisfying about killing bosses in just a few turns with the right materia combo. Remember fun nights at around for the very first time and going to the North Cave to face Sephiroth? Oh gosh, I do. This is a guy who has spent the entire game messing with you. He has killed one of your love interests, he's burnt down your town, killed your family, almost killed your childhood friend, and used you to use the black materia. I know, spoilers, but this game is almost 30 years old. If you haven't played it, that's your problem. But anyway, and as he just fades away, it's like, ha ha, no supernova for you, pretty boy. Take that seven foot sword and shove it right up your- Anyway, I really enjoy Final Fantasy VII. I mean, the music, which I have almost the entire soundtrack on my phone. The gameplay, the story, everything. Just takes me back to the times where I used to sit around with my brothers many, many moons ago, playing this game on my PlayStation 1 around the TV. And the only stress I had
So for my choice, I'm choosing The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. I'm choosing the entirety of this subseries because each one relaxes me in different ways. And yes, that also includes Trails into Reverie as well, since that game is technically speaking the capstone of both the Crossbell Saga and the Erebonian arc. Most of you probably know that I started the Legend of Heroes franchise with Cold Steel 1. It came at the right time in my life. Not only was the turn-based combat complex and engaging, but the narrative of the game drew me in during a time where I was stressed to the point one could call me insane in the membrane. Yes, I like that song. If you don't, go to hell. All joking aside though, Trails of Cold Steel was the right game for me at the right time, and if I'm struggling with something, I'll ideally pop on one of the Legend of Heroes games, and I'm able to forget my troubles for the duration of time I'm playing the game and for a good long while afterwards, because these games just draw me right in. I also find the music tracks are really relaxing as well. Startline, the track you're hearing for my sound bed, both pumps me up because of its happy sound, but it also keeps me calm because it's so melodic. This is just something I adore about Falcom in general, their ability to make absolutely amazing and compelling music in every game they do. For me, the music is part of what makes the Trails and Ease games have the identities that they have. There's always at least one track I want to listen to when I'm not playing the games. In terms of which one I find the most relaxing in this subseries, probably Cold Steel 1 because of its more deliberate pacing in terms of the narrative, followed by Trails into Reverie thanks to the Reverie Corridor. For me, a lot of my relaxation from JRPGs comes from hours of grinding up levels or grinding for specific materials for equipment. In terms of the grinding aspect, I feel like Reverie does it best as it literally gives you the option to grind at any point once you reach a certain threshold in the story. And given the combat is so engaging, that has me hooked. I actually imagine I'll be playing Trails into Reverie long after I've completed the game for the story and completed a nightmare run for the trophy, just because the grinding in the Reverie Corridor is so relaxing to me. I want to thank every creator who was involved with this massive undertaking. I'm really excited to see everyone's picks and hear why a particular game or franchise is relaxing for them. But what are some JRPGs you enjoy unwinding with? Is it because they have relaxing narratives or a gameplay loop that just helps you unwind? Let me know in the comments and here's hoping the next year of YouTube content will be a great one. If you want to see some more videos from a particular creator, their links will be in the description along with their social media platforms. Also, two of my previous videos will be popping up on screen now. One is a video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy, and my other video is the top JRPGs for intermediate players. I did that video with Chicken Fillets, who you saw earlier in this video. So, until next time, keep blazing that trail. <laughs>